when you first drew Beavis and Butthead, what did you have? Are you copying a person? Are you, is it somebody you knew? Well, see, I'm not very good at drawing. So it started out as two different attempts to draw the same person. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, like I was, I was trying. So, and he was a guy who's nothing like Beavis and Butthead. He was a, uh, he's actually a straight A student nerd. He's a, I shouldn't say what he is now. No, he's, a, he's an engineer. What's uh, his name? You were an engineer, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't say his name. Uh, you can't yeah, say his used name? Yeah, used to be. A, I probably shouldn't. Well, but, but you, well, Can I just say something yeah. before you say you probably shouldn't? <laughs> Don't you think that if if you told me that I was the impetus for Beavis and Butthead, you, you don't think that's a compliment? You wouldn't sue me? or Well, he wasn't really the impetus. He was the, very... The look. The only thing... Well, it started... See, what happened is I was trying to draw him and it sort of went... It's like, that doesn't quite look like him, but I like what it looks like. I think the first one was... Uh, What's was, his name? Was Beavis. What's his name? <laughs> I want to know his name. His name was uh, something like uh, Bob or Steve. Well, see, He's a now, Bob and now. And Steve, now Bob and Steve are listening going, it's me. You've just made a thousand, 10,000 Bobs and Steve have. But he was like, he was a... Uh, he, he was... I've told the story before, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you the different version. We you tell me a, a different version. We of, had a, no, I'll tell you. The, I'm getting the lie. better version. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we had a. It was calculus class senior year. We had this uh, a new teacher. Well, this guy comes up to like I'm passing this guy in the hallway. My my friend Tim Neefsey, and he goes, uh, he said, "Oh my God, have you seen the calculus teacher? She's hot. Maybe it's junior year. She's like super hot." And I was like, no, "I've." There's never been a hot teacher at the school. That's not well. She was like a former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, and really, everyone <laughs> was freaked out. But this one kid, he sat in front, and he was he was just he would laugh at everything she said, and she hardly ever said anything funny. But he would just sit there <laughs> writing really fast, and, going, <laughs> 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 and he was always biting his lip in this kind of nerdy way, going, <laughs> 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 and uh, I would imitate him in the back of class, and these guys sitting next to me started imitating him too and it was super annoying to the teacher and um does he know who he is uh does he know who he is? no do you <laughs> does the world know who that guy is that had that laugh a couple friends of mine do he you probably know, does he might i don't know will you say his name oh no okay I, I i i uh he's a nuclear engineer now um <laughs> I know that. The guy that was going, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, a nuclear engineer. <laughs> he's got the code. To the, <laughs> he's in charge of uh, safety. No, I, don't, I actually don't know what he's. So that's where the but sound. But he's a nuclear engineer. But that was just the sound. But when I was trying to draw him, it didn't look like that, but it looked like something else. The Beavis, the blonde haired one, was the first one I did. And I sort of exaggerated it to look more like, I didn't know who, but not anyone I knew specifically at all. It was just sort of like, I just imagined, it was kind of, influenced by all kinds of people and i drew a lighter in his hand and i just imagined him kind of going <laughs> lighting a lighter i don't know maybe a little bit of texas chainsaw massacre inspired you know all those weirdos i love that and i love i gotta say that your characters and and i think you've told the story ad nauseum so many times but i'm fascinated by your whole story um uh, are, are you in good terms with francesca Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, so Francesca yeah. is his wife, his ex-wife, and yeah, and we were all neighbors. We were all neighbors, and for your birthday, right? You were you were are you already an engineer? Are we still in school? Oh, I don't know. It depends on which. Uh, oh, uh, just the whole beginning. Oh, going of to giving, the. They gave you. She bought you an animation at home animation kit, right? Oh, not really. I mean, she bought me. She she had bought me a. That the story I might have told you was a. Uh, I mean, I was already decided. So you tell I was gonna do everybody animation. different stories. No, I, <laughs> no, I, 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 there was no kit because that that got into the New York Times. The guy summed it up, but there was no kit. I, I just bought some supplies with the catalog. I think, but, but you know, yeah, we were together. We didn't have kids yet, and I just decided I was going to give this a try because I'd seen, um, at there was a it's called the Animation Celebration that would every year this company would put in indie movie theaters a compilation of all the Oscar-nominated shorts around the world and just shorts that got into this festival. Do you, so, feel, do you have epilepsy? Uh, do, do, am I? <laughs> no, no, because the, the lights are flickering oh. and I just want to make <laughs> I sure. Look like I have, no, oh, no, 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 no. I just don't want I'm you to fine. have a seizure. Oh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so so that was that was like, uh, I don't know, um, a, a local guy, we lived in outside of Dallas, and a guy had gotten a film in there, this guy, no. Paul Clairhout. So, but yeah, but so yeah, no, she was, so is Jessica this was not, very is this... supportive. She, she, one thing she'd got me for my birthday was a little, uh, it was a little pink Panther thing where you could, 
was one of those just toys where you'd see the film. I might have told you about that, and you could step through. It was a really good way to kind of. But your study first frame was your first frame, one Frog Baseball. It's Frog Baseball. No, the first one I did was actually called Office Space, and it which later led to the, the movie. movie. But it was, yeah, it was just uh, the character Milton and the boss Lumberg taking a stapler. It was a two-minute short. Right. I've said, that's I've what, it. Yeah, that's what started everything for me because I, I animated the whole thing with, yeah, with the stuff I bought from a catalog cartoon color company. I think it's still there. Um, so now, aren't you afraid? You're mentioning them. Don't you yeah. think that they're going <laughs> to come gonna after you? Me. We, we started this? <laughs> but as that, long as you don't sue me. Um, I will never sue you, buddy. <laughs> but I found it fascinating that this was like just a side hobby. You yeah. you uh, entered a local animation festival. And then I remember uh, Mike's, who's the guy that worked with Mike that came out to Texas and saw you and, and helped you sell it to Liquid Television? What's, what was his name? Oh, someone who came to Texas. I don't, who, I don't, who is who? Who originally found you before from oh, from Three Arts? Oh well, Rotenberg. I had already gotten my stuff. Michael Rotenberg. Uh, so that happened. Just kind of network. I was I was a musician at the time. Actually, you I'd, still are. Yeah, when I, but I was playing with a guy, Doyle Bramhall. It was my only. I couldn't get a lawyer to call me back. Like I, so I the fourth short I did was Beavis and Butthead. Right, and that was in these festivals. Um, the the spike and mike festival and animation celebration and so i was getting some and i I just like mailed vhs tapes to these people i didn't have any connections but by then i was starting to get some and anyway that yeah rotenberg saw a tape of all five shorts and signed me right i had a deal to do beavis and butted we were in production on the show but it hadn't gone on the air i remember so. when he saw them and i remember the vhs yeah. tape. you know michael and i have been friends yeah, since, since we were thir 13 years old like high school area yeah, yeah. And you're still, you said I was a musician. You don't consider yourself a musician at oh, all? Oh, I guess I, I mean, I did it for a living back then. I, yeah, I, I still, I still play, yeah. Do you put the music, are you involved in any of the music in your movies and TV shows? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, there's a, mostly I use this really great composer, John Frizzell. I've used some, but I, I mean, the Beavis and Butted theme song is, was always me playing all the instruments. I, I just recently for the new series, redid it with uh, Glenn. On Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus, Gary, Gary Clark Jr., um, it was really awesome. He, he did, uh, he did a version. I'm, I'm playing on it too, but, but he's, he's amazing. You um, still love music? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think, I think if I was a, if I was a really good singer, I wouldn't be doing any of this. I, I just, if I had a really great voice, I would just do nothing else. I How do you know you don't? Do. You know what? I'm a, oh, I've tried. I do. I, can I be honest I have a good you? voice for doing stupid laughs. I'm, you know, no, but I'm going to ask you, and this may be uncomfortable. I want to, uh, no, because I'm a talent judge. So just this is yeah. just, <laughs> sing something, and I'll I'll tell you whether you have. <laughs> you don't want to sing for me. Well, you know, I did sing as Beavis. The uh, I got you, babe. <laughs> <Is> it, <laughs> and I uh, it was a hit, believe it or not, because of Cher. But uh, 